This is a summary of the meeting of the Folio Developers and Designers held in Montreal in the third week of September 2017. All of the presentations, notes, discussion documents, and a list of outcomes are in the shared drive at this address. Uh, this presentation is also at that address uh, and it includes the speaker's notes that I am using to narrate for this recording. This picture contains most of the attendees that were at the meeting. In total, there were 47 people that attended. Uh, from commercial partners, there were 19 from Index Data and its affiliates, and 13 from EBSCO. Three new development teams from commercial partners have joined since the Dublin meeting, and all three sent representatives to the Montreal meeting, uh, Stax, Frontside, and Quilto. From the Olay member libraries, there were four from Cornell, including the Olay hired developers, and one each from Texas A&M, GBV, Fenway Libraries Online, and the University of Chicago. The meeting was held over three days. The first day consisted of presentations from the overall development leads and the leads from particular components of the system. The notes from these presentations is at the notes link and the notes also include links to the presentations from many of the leads. On Tuesday and Wednesday, the participants divided into breakout meetings based on specific topics. Notes from these breakout meetings are in the shared drive, and in the final slides of this presentation, I'll list some of the key outcomes from the meeting. This is a paraphrasing from Sebastian Hammer's opening presentation, uh, and it comes from the Monday meeting notes. Uh, in it, he shares his vision for version one of Folio. Uh, getting to version one is of course important, but just as important is that the project not be burdened by technical debt uh, or those activities we do in order to get to version one fast, but then later have to be rewritten or redesigned to accommodate the vision past version one. That that final version one not look terrible and that the process of creating version one encompasses the broad community. More than reaching the goal of version one, Sebastian said he wanted the librarians, the designers, and the developers to feel a sense of ownership and delight when we get there. Early in the Monday meeting, Jacob and Kate described how the process of designing and developing Folio has evolved. They noted that we are not using the Agile software development process to the letter, rather we are using Agile values in the Folio project. That means focused requirements discussion with the SIGs to create manageable user stories that the developers work on during a sprint. Product owners are representatives from the SIGs during a coding sprint. They answer questions as they arise during development uh, from the design and development teams. This model is intended to aid efficiency of communication. Uh, the project has settled on short sprint cycles, uh, typically two weeks, uh, to enable quick feedback. Since the meeting four months ago in Dublin, the number of design and development teams has increased to the point where uh, the people like Jacob and Kate and Philip that used to work alone now facilitate discussions from peers to move the project forward. We're now in the 20th sprint of software development in Folio and the developers have found that they work in roughly two phases as an app comes together. This first phase is a rough-in phase where the basic architecture is put in place 
and the integration with our other apps is worked out. Uh, rough user interface and user stories are sufficient to work this phase. The second phase is refinement, and it is where more complex business logic is put into the app. These two phases of development allow for quick turnaround on initial ideas to make sure that the core concepts work and can be demonstrated. Of the apps in development now, only the user's app, which was the first one that started development late last year, has reached that second phase. That refined development is nearing completion and the user's app will soon be turned over to the SIGs for acceptance testing. As this development, or as this pattern of development phases becomes more familiar, we expect the apps in development now to move through the first phase and into the second phase in the coming sprint cycles. From a requirements perspective, there are two primary inputs. The version one scope spreadsheet that Harry maintains on behalf of the product council and the prototypes at ux.folio.org. This is a description of where we are uh, aiming for as our processes mature. For a particular app, the product owner and the user experience designer work on feature requirements and what the user interface will look like. Based on this, the product owner creates user stories in issues.folio.org and the designer creates a prototype on ux.folio.org. Then the developers get to work. For feedback, the developers present their work in sprint reviews, uh, usually after every other sprint, and the product owner demonstrates completed work to the SIGs. At some point, we will start user acceptance testing with the SIGs. Also during the Monday meeting, we heard from developers that were new to the project. They were asked what was good about the project and, and what needed improvement. We heard that the depth of documentation is good, but there needs to be higher, broader levels of documentation for developers that are just getting started. The documentation also needs more of a why something is done in addition to the how it was done. That way, unnecessary repeated discussion about previous decisions can be avoided. Throughout the documentation, there's also a need for signposts about what is good and solid, what is under development, and what is more speculative in nature. Philip presented on the user experience design process. One of the graphics he used is this one that shows the layers of design that the user experience team is considering. On the left is the layers of cascading style sheets from the basic structure and sizes of elements to the user interface through the things that can be changed at the host level button styles and other layout variables, to the things that can be selected by the end user, like colors and contrast levels between user interface elements. On the right is the illustration that there will be two layers of preferences, things that can be changed at the tenant level and things that can be changed by the end user. Philip described his thinking on the evolution of the documentation for the user experience designers. Uh, first is the folio pattern, which describes how folio looks and operates. Uh, for instance, there are places in the apps now where action is taken on the server as soon as someone makes a change to a screen. In other places, the change isn't saved until the user clicks on a button or a link to save. The folio pattern document will harmonize these actions so that they are consistent between apps. The layout bundles and the component library are the widgets that make up the user interface. 
these come from a common place so that they look and behave consistently between apps. Uh, lastly is a list of variables that designers and developers can use to tweak various aspects of the user interface. These final slides are the list the, the important points that came out of the breakout groups uh, identified for action uh, coming out of the Montreal meeting. In some places, there are issue identifiers that are links to where the discussion is happening on issues.folio.org. First up is the resource management breakout. During the three sessions where this breakout met, there was a lot of discussion about what the codex needs to be and how it can be implemented. The software architects are next going to focus on the subset of the codex needed for finding records, then look at the existing user stories that touch on the codex. Based on that, a straw man model and sketches will be created for further review by the SIGs and designers. Uh, in the end, new user stories will be created for development of the codex functionality. The designers in the user experience breakout focused a great deal on the documentation needed to make sure that they all stay on the same page as new apps are developed. Uh, this is an evolving process as the design vision moves from Philip only to a group effort of the designers coming into the project. Like the developers, the designers are seeing the need to document not only what a design element is, but also the why of that decision. They talked about the universal navigation of the version one prototype, how links between apps operate, and how context is transferred from, say, the checkout app to the inventory app when a monograph title is clicked on. Also in the user or, or universal navigation prototype is how apps look when going from a list of, say, loans to details about a particular loan. The developers for the user interface, that part of Folio that you've heard called Stripes, focused on making progress with the user interface components. Based on the choices that have been made so far, it seems like the web frameworks that have been chosen support right to left languages with a simple HTML change. The issue ticket UI org 31 has details including screen grabs of how a folio app looks in left to right and right to left configuration. There was also the realization that the user interface developers needed to encode information about icons and colors that have different meanings in different cultures. In Japan, for instance, Go is blue. In Chinese culture, red is used as a color meaning an operation completed successfully. The user interface developers are also concerned about how screens will look with varying lengths of messages and if really long messages will break the screen layout. Uh, there is an issue in the system for setting up automated tests for different translations to catch when this happens. Montreal was the first time there was a concentrated group of staff that were concerned about the operation of the folio system. So a, a few of the breakout groups focused on the needs of the operation staff. There are issues identified to define the needs of preliminary test infrastructures and expectations for system performance goals. This group also started thinking about what will be needed to migrate libraries into Folio, including defining migration requirements and toolkits for profiling library installations and data migrations. The development of Folio has come far enough along that a group focused on testing can begin. 
Uh, this group is going to set up some documentation about existing and proposed automated user interface testing processes. They're also looking to implement testing frameworks for the automated tests. A key need for doing this is going to be establishing the baseline of browser versions and operating systems that will be used in version one. This is a question that will probably come back to the Product Council for further exploration and definition. The proposed model for handling locations in Folio, the three levels plus a bucket as a fourth level concept, is new since the technical team last met. So there was a discussion about how to accommodate this flexible notion of locations throughout the system. The breakout attendees confirmed that the locations model is sound and that coming out of the Montreal meeting, there is a need to develop sketches and documentation for how this will work in practice. Those sketches and documentation will be reviewed by the SIGs to further confirm the model. The last group is the onboarding group. As discussed earlier, there is a need for a choose-your-own-adventure approach to the documentation for when a new participant joins Folio. There is some information that is common to all, for instance, the platform nature of Folio and the user experience design first philosophy. But then the needs of new participants diverge depending on whether they are librarians, designers, or developers. In keeping with the community nature of the project, there was also a discussion for, of the need for a central knowledge base of questions, answers, tips, and tricks for using Folio. Uh, this idea will be taken to the Product Council for further development. The breakout participants also thought a help needed place for open tasks would be useful for new participants looking to get familiar with the project uh, using hands-on tasks. Finally, the group identified the need to create processes and procedures for accepting things beyond code. There's already a process in place for contributing code to Folio. A similar process is needed for design, documentation, development specifications, and so forth. This concludes this overview of the September 2017 developers meeting in Montreal. If you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask them. Uh, you can use discuss.folio.org or ask them on Slack. Thank you.